Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Lenovo gaming laptop. This is Lenovo gaming LOQ or LOQ. This is a Lenovo LOQ, the exact model is a 16 APH8. And in this video I'm gonna go over how you can open it up, how you can add an extra storage and what are the capacity that you can have in there. By adding an extra uh, storage you're not gonna modify anything in the system or you simply just open it up. In my computer, you're gonna see that extra big partition that you have in there. You can add up to four terabyte extra storage in there, SSD, NVMe. And I will always recommend you guys to grab the 980 Pro if you wanna go up to two terabyte, but if you wanna go four terabyte, it has to be a single-sided chip. And I, the only brand that I see in four terabyte single-sided NVMe are the Crucial brand. So you can go with the Crucial one, two, uh, four terabyte single-sided chip or up to two terabyte i recommend you the 980 pro or 970 plus those are good but the pro is the best that's for adding an extra storage but if you want to remove the main storage which on this model they do come with a 500 gig or with one terabyte they do the quality of the storage that they give you the brand the quality are not the greatest or so just pretty much a really cheap brand that they just put it in there I recommend you guys replace them with a better quality, like a uh, Samsung 980 Pro, at least two terabyte for this, for main storage, and another two terabyte for extra storage on the, in there. Just remember, if you replace the main storage, you're not gonna have any operating system, anything in the new drive, so you have to install freshly, install Windows. I made a really short video how to create your Windows 10 or Windows 11 USB boot drive. I'll leave that link in the video description in case you want to purchase, uh, create yours. It's free to do. And if you have logged in with a Windows, uh, I mean, with your Hotmail account to your Windows, your license key is registered based on the motherboard. And so as soon as you install the same version of the Windows, it's going to auto-activate itself so you don't have to do anything. And creating Windows USB key, it's free. Check my links in the video description. And if you want to install the Windows 10 or 11 without any bloatware like Candy Crush or McAfee antivirus promotional programs that they have in there, follow any of the, my video how to install Windows and then you will have your simple Windows installed without no bloatware in there. All right. At the end of this video, I'm going to just uh, boot up from this USB and show you guys how to boot it up in case you wonder. But the process of the installation is the same for any brand. So check any of my video installation for Windows and then you'll be set to go. All right. In this case, the client brought me their own uh, SSD. This is an NVMe Gen 4 one terabyte Kingston. So we're going to be using this instead of uh, the higher brand. All right. So first thing first, back up your files. Power off the laptop completely. I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using. Tool number one and most important one, a good screwdriver is must. I purchased this iFixit screwdriver set. This is the basic set. You're gonna be using a Phillips number one. If you get a pro set, they give you opening tools, stuff like that. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. So grab this one. Now we're gonna remove the screws down here. There are two types of screws, the short ones and the long screw. The short ones are the four in front of the laptop right here. These four screws are short ones, two sides, two back and mid back, those are the long screws. Go ahead and remove the short screws first and keep them in a separate pile so you don't mix match them with the rest of the screws. All right, now we're gonna remove the long screws. They're all the same, keep them in a separate pile. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and supports me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. All right, now that we remove all these screws, there are three hidden screws that we need to remove. You're gonna do that by using a guitar pick or opening tool. There, we need to remove this back grill. To remove the back grill, the tiny clips that they need to be removed. So what you want to do, you want to stick this opening tool right, jam it right in there. And we're going to use a pressure right in it, press it in here so it lifts up this part a little bit. And then while you're pulling it back, you want to hear that big click sound. Those are the clips that are getting loose. So once you got it up to here, let it go. And do the same thing on this side. Stick it all the way in there. 
and slide it back. There you go. And now you can move this one here. I always recommend you to pull it straight, don't put it sideways. There you go. If you put it sideways, you can break these clips here. Not a big deal, but you don't want to break anything. Now the screws are hitting corner, mid, and to the other side. So go ahead and remove these screws right here. These are the same long screws as the rest. You want to grab the cover from here and put your thumb in here and up and down like that. Just wiggle around and it will release itself. You want to hear big click sound. Those are the clips that are getting loose in the front end. And there's a big clip right in the middle hook right there. This hook grabs it right in here. That's why you need to pull it up and wiggle it around. All right. So let's put this to one side. Down here, we can see the NVMe right over here. And this is a short, brand, uh, short NVMe. I don't know why they don't even give you a full size NVMe. I don't see the brand, but it's just a basic brand. And I can see the second slot right in here and they actually do provide you the M.2 screw right over here. So you don't need to disconnect the battery, absolutely not necessary, but if you want to, you can just pull this jack backward. But if you're removing RAM battery, I mean RAM SSD, you don't need to, as long as you power up. So remove this screw right in here. And then the SSD will come out in 45 degree angle. All right, now what you want to do in here, you want to grab it and slide it backward in 45 degree angle. You don't want to lift it upward, otherwise you're going to break the dim or the SSD. Just slide it back and it comes right here. And the reason why I say you can't put a double-sided one, let's go ahead and open this one right in here first. This is a single-sided. I mean, the chips, all the components are in one side and it's not on side. Most brands, like a 990 or some other brand, they have like a double-sided chip in there. And you could use it if you had a higher uh, M.2 jack. This M.2 jack is a low riser. There's enough space to put a, a bigger one, but they didn't put, they put a low riser. So if you put a double-sided chip in here and you put it down, because of this riser right in here, it's going to make a short through the uh, drive that you're going to install. So you get a new one in. And you make sure the notch in here matches the notch right in the dim. Bring it down in 10, 15 degree all the way in there. Push it down. And when I push it, I still see this kind of bending here. I don't like it. Let me see if I can remove and screw this riser right in here, which is I'm not really kind about it. They do give you space in here, but this riser, it is touching this NVMe. Just by a little bit, but I don't like it. Let me just get a plier and see if we can remove that one. If you can't remove it, you just gotta work with it. No, is there is pretty much part of the back plate, so it's not removable. So anyway, we can't do much in here. You could just install this one in in the other one and leave it in here, but I get a shorter one, but doesn't matter I'm gonna put this one over and we're gonna put the screw right over in here now if you want to install it in the other side the screw is right over here you can remove it like that and let's remove this one from here and bring it and install it right in here and there's a cables in here that bothers the and the fan cables, you got to push them away. There we go. And you can just set it down flat right there. So there we go. You can put it right in there. And you can keep the old one in here and put a, another one over here. Doesn't matter. I prefer to have it in here. They're both the same. And the client wants this old one back. They want to use it on an enclosure, on a USB. So you can use this on an enclosure, use it on external storage. But you can have a four terabyte single sided and a four terabyte single sided over here. All right, let's put that screw that we removed from here. So if in the future they need to put a NVMe, they can just do it. Tighten up the screws. 
I just want to make sure the screws for the fan and everything else is tight enough. But sometimes the screws get loose enough. All right, once we're done with that one, we have added the configuration that you want, depending on uh, your client. They do give you a thermal pad in here. You can lift up this thermal pad, or this is like about four millimeter thermal pad or five millimeter thermal pad. I get a five millimeter, and you can just put it over the NVMe right there, and it's gonna use this aluminum fold foil to cool down itself. And pretty much, if you don't put it, that's fine too. Push it down the cover. Make sure you don't nice big click sounds on the side in the middle right there. Once you're done with that, put the three screws under the rail right in here, one on the back, one in the middle, and one all the way to the left side. All right. Now first, you want to put the grill in. Let's move this one. And you want to slide it in, make sure it clicks in. And we are going to put the rest of the screws. Put the long screws from the mid towards the back and the short screws in the front. And we're going to power it on and I'm going to insert the USB boot drive that I created. And it's going to just boot up through that USB and it's going to take me to a Windows installation process. Windows installation process, it takes up to, I would say, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. And once you're in the desktop, you can just do a few Windows update to update the drivers and you're set to go. Freshly installed. So let's go ahead and flip it over. Let me see, where do they have this USB? I'll put the USB that I created in one of the ports. Gonna grab my charger. If I find the cable which is right over here, plug in the cable, and we're gonna power it on, and we're gonna wait, and it's gonna boot up, because they're gonna, it's gonna see that there's no operating system in the drive, and it's gonna look for the next bootable drive, which is the USB that we installed, and it's gonna start booting into it. Boot drive missing, or, it's not working instead of recovering it. Then press OK. So it's not detecting. Boot menu. I don't see anything. So let's go ahead and replace the USB port. Let's put it on the side. Try different USB port. There you go. On the side port, it did detect my USB. So we're just going to press Enter. And it's going to start loading me into the, my USB boot drive. It takes up to a few, um, 30 seconds probably. It's not loading. There you go. Nice. It's starting up and there we have it inside our installation step-by-step -step guide. It's really, really simple to follow these steps on any of my videos. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out to upgrade your storage for your Lenovo LOQ model. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment or try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next videos.